Welcome to the podcast for Resurrection Lutheran Church in Fredericksburg, Texas. I'm Pastor Garrett Buvinghausen. Today is Monday, April 6th, 2020. Today for our devotion, we will be going through the congregation at prayer. This is something that we at Resurrection do uh, every Sunday to start Sunday school off, but it is a daily devotional guide for us uh, to guide us along in proper meditation on God's Word and prayer that is following God's Word as well. So today we will be going through our guide for daily meditation and prayer, which you can find as a link uh, to a PDF in the description. If you'd like to take some time right now to Follow that link, download the PDF, print it out, whatever you need to do, or you can just simply listen in. But if you'd like to follow along, I recommend that you take a look at that PDF and join me in making these confessions and also praying along with me as well. So here we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The psalm for this week is Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. The antiphon is verse 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. We now turn to the memory work on the back page. For this week is the sacrament of holy baptism, the fourth part. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
Romans chapter 6, verse 4. The hymn of the week is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, found in the Lutheran service book number 441, stanzas 1 and 2. Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes Hosanna cry. O Savior meek, pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments strewed. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, or captive death and conquered sin. Memory verse for this week. Let's say it all together. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. We continue with the readings for the day from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. Therefore we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading today from Martin Chemnitz. 
And it is the sweetest comfort that sin, which made its habitation in human flesh, was condemned in the same human flesh in the person of Christ. Our body is the body of death, but in that same body of ours which the Son of God assumed from us, death was again destroyed. Although our sins have separated us very far from God, so that we have been alienated from the grace, righteousness, and life of God, yet the Son of God has brought very close to us those heavenly blessings which had been removed far from us, laying them before us through his incarnation in the flesh, which is of the same substance with our own, so that of his fullness we have received grace for grace. This is the most comforting and salutary exchange, that the Son of God has received from us a human nature, and sanctified and blessed and exalted and glorified it in his own person. Moreover, in his holy supper he joins himself to us in that flesh, so that we may be strengthened by this most certain pledge of the salvation and glorification of our nature. For he does not blush to call us brothers. Therefore, because we are such, he also joins himself to us in that flesh and blood. Flesh brought death into this world, and again, the flesh of the Son of Man was given for the life of the world, in order that he who eats the flesh of Christ may have eternal life. So for our text. We now turn to the prayers on the inside of the Congregation at Prayer Sheet, and we will continue with the Collect for the Week. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, look down from heaven, behold, visit, and relieve your servants who stand in need of our prayers. Resurrection Lutheran Church, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the Reverend President Matthew Harrison, the Reverend President Michael Newman, our Concordia Seminaries, Colleges, and Schools, our Sister Churches, the United States of America, President Donald Trump, Governor Greg Abbott, Seth, Rosalie, Candace, Samantha, Darcy, Kay, Loretta, Wayne, Adosha, Evelyn, Sharon, Laura Lee, John, Linda, Orman, Noreen, and all those who are suffering from the novel coronavirus. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Grant them comfort and sure confidence in you. Defend them from all danger and keep them in perpetual peace and safety through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, 
my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.